Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Call the meeting uh -huh. order. Ms. Thompson, you what? have the honors. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um, we went to a conference and we have um, just met some of the most wonderful people. And just, I met a rear admiral, we're best friends. And um, it was just unbelievable, just unbelievable. It's so nice to be around other people that are looking in directions that you'd like to look at, and it was just a real blessing. I'm so thankful I was able to go. I appreciate the citizens of the county allowing me to go, so thank you very much. Um, I'm going to just say a quick prayer, and then we'll get to business. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this time and this gift that you've given all of us to be in the position of being county commissioners. God, help us always to stay humble and kind, never get prideful, and always seek you with anything that we're doing and let you lead through us. In your precious name, I pray. Amen. May we stand for the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to follow up with Ms. Thompson's remarks. Um, we had a conference from Wednesday night through actually Sunday morning, I suppose, mm -hmm. um, in Concord, and we all learned a lot. So if we don't look smarter, we think we are smarter after the conference. So <laughs> just thought it was a, an excellent presentation, and we all learned a lot. Uh, our county manager was there for a portion of the, of the meetings as well. Um, so your county should be smarter. Okay, uh, public comments. Uh, Mr. Walker, good to see you again, sir. Yeah, I'm back again for about the ninth time. <laughs> uh, I would have been back sooner, but I've been a little under the weather. <laughs> I talked to Mr. Carter several times, Mr. Walker, Mr. Johnson. And he agreed, Mr. Johnson agrees with me, and talked to Amy Galley, and she's uh, supposed to be returning my call, haven't got one yet, and get this thing going through the Senate down there. And I sure would appreciate it if y'all would pass the TARP law, where they find them. Mr. Johnson said he would put a car down there, and he would take care of that. Now, I've been up here, and y'all had time enough to think about this. Hey, will y'all please pass it so we can get on with this in Raleigh? I think you're talking about a law to be passed in Raleigh. We don't have a vote on that. Well, y'all had to do it first in Alamance County to have a TARP law in Alamance County for it. May, I, may I suggest that we look at our legal team over here. Uh, I see you on two different roads. <laughs> Would you guys look into this for us and report back? We sure will. And let us know what we can do, what we should be doing, uh, and what the legalities are, and whether it's county and or state, or just the state level. I'll be happy to look into that. And just a reminder to approve the agenda. Correct. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my understanding you can pass it here for Alamance County if you want to. Do Mr. Regal and Raleigh, yeah, Amy is supposed to talk to him about it too. All right. Ain't that what his name is? Sure, Thompson. Regal, ain't that his name? Down in Raleigh. Regal. Regal. Talking about Riddle, yeah, Dale. yeah, yeah. So we'll look into it, and we really appreciate you coming back. Okay, so I can come back to the next meeting, and y'all have a yes or no answer. <laughs> I won't guarantee that. Well, I <laughs> wouldn't either, as long as we've been dealing point. with it. But we'll be happy to look into it. Okay. Yeah. Thank All you, right. sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walker.
before we go on to the second speaker, uh, we need a motion on approval motion of the approve. agenda. Second. Motion is second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. Mr. Pierce. And good to see you again, sir. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Good evening, commissioners, uh, staff. Uh, I'm Anthony Pierce. I'm uh, just here to want to talk briefly about the very last item on the agenda, which is the county manager's report, especially as it relates to the turnover. So I know every department is struggling right now trying to retain staff and get qualified people and fill those positions, but one in particular that kind of start, uh, actually piqued my interest is DSS. Uh, DSS is right now has the most vacant positions out of any other department, including the sheriff's office, which is almost unheard of. Um, now granted, I know that there's a lot of funding coming in for DSS uh, through special grants, et cetera, to be able to service the community, to be able to service uh, all those that need that important service. But I would love to see something done um, to try to figure out a way to retain their staff. Because if, if from being a, a department head myself, it's tough to run a department when you don't have the people you need. It's tough to provide those services to the people who really need them if you don't have the people that can actually look into the issues and get those services out there. So I'm asking that we take a look at some point, and I haven't met with Ms. York just yet, so I apologize for that to understand your strategic direction for the department, but I would love us to think outside the box about some retention strategy that we can do to retain uh, this department and actually support this department and make them top priority just like some of our other departments. Uh, and I think that we can do this. We can be creative in our design, especially since money is flowing in. But it's something I would love us to spend a little bit more attention because that service is really, really needed. Um, I know a lot of people that utilize that department and those services. And I think that we as a county uh, should not let this trend continue to get bigger and bigger, which it seems like it has over the last six to 12 months uh, from looking at past reports when we looked at retention um, in a 12 month period, especially open vacant positions. So thank you. And I'll give you back a minute and 18 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Those are all the uh, speakers that have signed up. We thank you. We have the consent agenda. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. A motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 There's no opposition, apparently. Thank you. It says by acclamation. We next have the North Carolina Department of Commerce. Uh, they put on a wonderful presentation, which, um, which I attended uh, and very much appreciated at our conference. Uh, Ms. York, do you want to present them or do you want me just to ask them to come forward? If you'll just ask them to come up, we have met with them and they would like to introduce themselves and give a short presentation explaining the new realignment for workforce development. So. Excellent. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, good to see you again, guys. Thank you, Mr. Sure. Chairman. Uh, my name is Chet Moddershead. I'm with the Division of Workforce Solutions. I'm the Assistant Secretary there. And this is my teammate, uh, Jenny Harris. Dr. Jenny Harris. I'm the Director of Business Services for the Division of Workforce Solutions. Um, we've got a few slides here regarding uh, our workforce realignment. Uh, oh, terrific. Thanks, Clicker. Um, regarding our realignment project. And we thought we'd give you some background information. Uh, we feel really good about the, the, we understand the intentions of the commission to be. We feel like it's a move in the, in the, in the right direction. Um, what we're looking at here is a map of the eight economic development prosperity zones. And as you all know, this is the map that uh, most state agencies use to push resources out to uh, all the uh, organizations throughout the state. You can see in addition to the Department of Commerce and the Economic Development Partnership of North Carolina, HHS, DOT, and even states industry expansion solutions all use this model to coordinate economic development resources across the state. What this is is a map of our 22 workforce boards overlaid the eight prosperity zones here. Um, and you can see there's all different shapes and sizes. You can see over in the uh, in zone one, there's a, a zone on the coast that's got 10 counties. Uh, if you look in zone five, where y'all are, you can see that uh, Davidson and Guilford are a single county. And then the regional partnership 
is actually a workforce board that's in three separate prosperity zones. Orange is in zone three, y'all in Alamance and Randolph are in five, and then Moore and Montgomery are down in the Sand Hills in zone four. Jenny, you want to talk about the how this impacts uh, employer engagement? Sure. Um, so, for example, um, in, with economic development projects, um, the point of workforce at the federal level is to align workforce and economic development. So when you look at the state and you look at where the state resources are going out and where the partnerships and collaborations are happening at the prosperity zone level, um, we've got a workforce board that encompasses three prosperity zones currently, and so those conversations are happening without other counties being a part of it. Or there could be, this is a great example, Toyota is going to be looking at a statewide effort on recruiting even outside of the state. And so we want to make sure that those, that, that those conversations are happening collaboratively. And when you have a workforce board that's to, or a county that's split up into different regions, that makes it more difficult for, them, for that collaboration to happen. Uh, we initially had a discussion of realignment uh, a few years ago and our the NC Works Commission is the big uh, umbrella agency that oversees uh, policy for workforce for all the agencies uh, in, in North Carolina associated with these federal dollars. Uh, there was talk about uh, okay we're going to try to make eight, pros or eight workforce boards to match the eight prosperity zones and that's not the case. Obviously we're what, uh, what matters here is what is a local intent. We want local folks to buy into this and some uh, prosperity zones may have two or three workforce boards. Some, uh, our, our goal here is to really kind of to, to fix the map, the map that I showed you just a second ago to make sure that these resources in terms of economic development and workforce development are pushed out uh, kind of so this is a little cleaner administratively and we're able to better speak to the em employer engagement community. Um, Funding for the counties is not going to change. So regardless of whether you're affiliated with your current workforce board or another workforce board, the federal dollars that go to Alamance County is going to remain the same. The way funding works for the Division of Workforce Solutions, we're 100% federally funded. We get a big workforce grant from the U.S. Department of Labor. And the way the funding, the allocation works is the more prosperous a state is, the fewer workforce dollars you get. So Arkansas is getting more than us and that's just fine because you know we're prosperous and of course Toyota and Vinfast in Chatham County and, and uh, Apple, those are all going to help us uh, improve our economic standing. So it's safe to say that North Carolina is going to continue to get reduced allocations from the feds every year, you know, for the foreseeable future. We had to do some staffing changes to make uh, structural changes for that. We feel like we're in a good place now. Um, but I think something to keep in mind as Alamance County continues to grow and become more successful, the model that we have to allocate dollars to all 100 counties is the same. So the more successful Alamance <coughs> becomes economically, the fewer federal workforce dollars you're going to get. I think that's something to keep in mind. That being said, regardless of whether you're with Workforce Board A or Workforce Board B, the allocation you get is going to be the same. So, the, am, uh, Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Good, good. I don't want to roll around in that too long. Um, the uh, NC Works Career Centers are, will still have local control. So the state cannot, uh, does not have operational control over the workforce centers. The local workforce boards have that. Um, this is something also we do not see any massive layoffs associated with uh, local workforce board staff. We do feel like there may be some staff that have to shift duties a little bit. Um, you know, if there if there is a change, and so we we've had conversations with uh, the Piedmont Triad workforce board, uh, and they have no intentions for any kind of massive layoffs. We do feel like over time there's going to be greater administrative savings. So we'll be able to take some of these administrative dollars and put those towards employer engagement or other programs. Because as you know, uh, really the value of any program are the program dollars and the program effort as opposed to the administrative effort. Um, what am I missing, Jenny? Well, what other, is there anything else associated with realignment that I, that I missed? Uh, I think those are the key points. Okay. Um, 
again, we talked about these guiding principles that the NC Works Commission put together. Um, and that's something that we're, that we're abiding by. And some of the key principles, again, we want to reduce the number of workforce boards that are in multiple prosperity zones. And then we also want to reduce the number of single county workforce boards because we feel like uh, it's going to be a better use of federal dollars. And one of the things that we feel really good about is the proposal for uh, Alamance to join the Piedmont Triad Workforce Board. We feel like that's a good one because they are great stewards of federal dollars. They also do a fantastic job of aligning workforce development and economic development. They've got one individual who manages both of those programs. So that individual, Wendy Walker Fox, has got a real strategic view of, uh, of, of how to make sure that workforce development and economic development are working together to serve their customers. So again, as a result of realignment, you're not talking about fewer customers served, no change in the allocation, um, and then greater administrative efficiencies, economies of scale, and that we've got this one at the bottom of the slide here, this laundry list of uh, organizations that are already using that prosperity zone map, the map of eight that we feel like will better serve your employers and your job seekers. So this is the timeline here. Um, this all started back in November of 21, and we wanted to get uh, the NC Works Commission to put together a study about realignment. And uh, it's gone through the NC Works Commission process of approval. And I'd like to have y'all focus in on the next to the last uh, bullet there, where chief local elected officials may submit a request for new workforce development board areas to the NC Works Commission. And um, our timeline for that is through the middle of September, September 15th. And so what we would ask the commission to do is to uh, submit a, what we call a letter of intent. It just says that uh, your plan is to uh, leave your current workforce board and join the Piedmont Triad Workforce Board. And the effective start date for that is July of 2023. So y'all are making a decision by the middle of September, and we've got a, uh, some paperwork and that sort of thing that, that would need to be completed with it. Of course, with any, we'll call it a county transfer. That's the type of action that's taking place. And just to note, the paperwork needs to be in by September 15th, not the decision. Yes, ma'am. That's exactly right. So the you, you want to have the you need to make the decision sooner rather than later. But and we've got a. Uh, a team that can help y'all with any administrative, like I said, any kind of paperwork that needs to be done. We hired a consulting firm to come in to help uh, with any kind of questions y'all have and just to help with the administrative legwork. So uh, the paperwork has to be in before the decision? That's not... Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm sorry if I misspoke. Um, we'd like y'all to make a decision first and then, <laughs> and then complete any associated paperwork with it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Again, one of the things about I want to reiterate is uh, I, I see Tammy Wallace here with um, and with our, she's the workforce board director, and this is not an indictment of Tammy or any of the, the work that she has done. This is really about how we can better align the system to better serve our customers. So we, we all think highly of Tammy and her work. So I heard you right when you said the better we do, the less we'll need that federal money. And that's a good thing. So we don't need to just keep doing the same old, same old to keep that amount of money coming in, right? Well, the more, yeah, the more successful a county is, right. the fewer dollars you receive. What we feel like is there's still, as I'm sure y'all know, there's still parts of every county that of folks that need a hand up, not a hand out, but a yeah. hand up, and uh, opportunities for these federal dollars for training, that sort of thing. Right. What we recommend um, is that there's always should be efforts to diversify your revenue streams. And so what we've hired at DWS as a grants manager. So if, if at the local workforce board level, if there is a grant that, uh, that anybody's interested in, we've got someone who can help write the grant uh, for that local workforce board to help diversify those revenue streams. We feel like that's important. Um, but uh, to, to answer your question, we feel like merging those, uh, having y'all join a larger workforce board is going to allow your administrative dollars to go further 
and you can divert some more administrative dollars into program needs to help job seekers and to help employers with their workforce needs. I know, Dr. Gatewood, when we did the mechatronics excellence, blah, 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 Dr. Harrison and I were part of that. The workforce spoke to us one of the days talking about how that would feed into people who only want to come here for that specific program. That was them, correct? Uh, thank you. He right. was tall and he had, he had white hair. He, he, he was completely gray. <laughs> that wasn't me. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you used to be You got part of that no. out. Yeah. But I remember him. He was out of Raleigh. Super He's nice dead. man. At least that's what he told us. <laughs> but he was part of that because, I mean, it was excellent the way he brought what the college was doing into that. It was just such a great pathway. So that's all. I don't forget things. Or what you look like either. Right. Good witness. <laughs> so substantially, we could make a decision tonight. We could wait till September the fifth, our next meeting, uh, but we need to do it at least by September five. Does that give you time and us time to get the paperwork in if we make a change? Yes, sir. All right, uh, Mr. Marsh. I have a couple questions. Do you have a sense of how much money in federal dollars the county gets now? for its workforce work development. I do. I've got a paper here. I can grab it for you. I'm going to bring both my work Bible. <laughs> um, cur so currently, all right. Hooray, Alamance is at the top of the list. I've got mm -hmm. small print. Um, so our um, our fiscal year, our, our program year goes from July 1 to June 30th. And so last year, the total dollars that y'all received was uh, $784,378. That's the total allocation. And then, um, so this year is uh, $774,084. So y'all lost about 1.3% uh, in terms of your allocation. So economically, y'all stayed about the same from uh, last year to this year. Okay. And just for my benefit, can you give me some examples of what the Workforce Development Board does with that 780 rough yes, dollars? Yes, sir. What they, uh, those federal dollars obviously pay for staff at the NC Works Career Center. Huh. But then also, the, uh, that board sets policy in three areas. What, what they can do to help uh, adults who need assistance, dislocated workers, uh, which are those folks who are uh, let go of their job through no fault of their own, um, and then youth. So those are the three primary areas where the dollars are channeled. But of course, if Johnny Job Seeker comes into a NC Works Career Center and says, um, I just got laid off, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do, well, uh, a member of the NC Works Career Center staff would do, conduct an assessment, and then we've got these federal dollars to engage in training to help Johnny Job Seeker get trained and pivoted, and then jobs uh, and services to get back to work. Uh, what are some of the employers, sir? Uh, Jenny handles employer engagement. You want to talk about some of the yeah, things that happen uh, with employer engagement? Sure. So the employer is the number one customer. Um, uh, they are, I, was, I said that at, on Saturday in our session um, and some of these other things. So um, the employer is our number one customer. Depending on what the employer needs, if they need welders, then the workforce board will go out and, and we're in, in a partnership with the career center. Those, both of those staffs will go out and find people, whether at the community college or at the school CTE programs, to go find people who are interested in those jobs, do the assessment, get them trained, get them into those jobs. So, so that makes the employer obviously happy because they can grow, contribute more to the tax base of the county, and, and continue to, to just meet their own production needs. Um, that's the employer side of it and the participant side of it. So that's where those funds are used. You mentioned that the downside of the county forming its own workforce development board was administrative costs. <laughs> administrative costs, we see that the, the larger the workforce board, right. the, the economies of scale kick in where you're able to utilize uh, fewer administrative dollars to get more stuff done. Right. Um, are there any other downsides? Because it seems to me there's also 
a potentially big upside. But are there any more downsides to the county having its own? A county having a, becoming its, its, its own, own, own single? Yes. Well, if a county becomes its own single workforce board, you would have to ask for that to happen. You have to make a, um, make a request for that to happen. And then the NC Works Commission would have to approve that request. So any change in the status quo would require approval from the NC Works Commission. I have to get that anyway. I mean, I guess my question is, right. though, benefits and, and burdens of, uh, it seems to me, if, if we're talking about local employers and local schools and a local ACC, there may be some benefit in the county running itself. If a county runs itself, your administrative costs are going to be through the roof. So you've got fewer dollars that go towards participants or, and, and employers, yeah. more dollars for admin. We've got a couple, we've got a, a few single county workforce boards and their administrative costs are disproportionately high because whether you're running a, um, one county or five counties or eight counties, mm -hmm. there's still all the, you know, we conduct the monitoring. So we've got to, you know, they've got monitoring to deal with, uh, setting policies, all that kind of garden variety admin work that has to be done. And if you're just doing it for one county as opposed to five counties, those admin costs are going to be disproportionately high. So that's fewer dollars right. that are going to go towards a program. This year, based on that, this year we'd only have $77,000 to run a program administrative staff-wise. That probably wouldn't pay for the, the, the director, I don't know, and, it, and benefits. So the other side of that, too, is a single county board. You're looking at employers that hire from a 35 to 55 mile radius. They might be employers that are Toyota, the next county over, that's looking for 7,000 people that are going to pull from Alamance County for employees. Okay. If you're a single county board and you're not a part of the board that's, that Randolph is a part of, it's going to be up to the, your single county board to decide whether they want to spend their funds on another county on another board area I see so that uh, and that that's where the federal law says the fostering regional collaboration making sure that it's aligned with economic development so all of those things are thought about at the beginning of a recruitment project or an expansion project for the employers I'm sold <laughs> and just to answer your question we have a current provider obviously we have another that's uh, uh, entertaining us or at least uh, asking us to look at them as well so we have some really good options um, and I, I agree with you sir I don't think we want to bite that bullet uh, although uh, joining, joining County Guilford is very likely to do that they're doing it right now that's correct yeah what are the questions or comments to y'all have I have two yes sir that's two questions are there other uh, workforce boards or organizations like yours that uh, compete against each other for these federal dollars? Uh, n uh, in terms of competing for federal dollars, I, no, sir. If I there's not more than one workforce board. I mean, there's not one organization. There's not another organization like yours that compete. Oh, yeah, no. We're the, there is one state workforce agency in every state, and that's designated by the governor. And the governor says that the Division of Workforce Solutions is the right. state workforce. That's what, that's what I thought, but I thought I'd ask because I wasn't certain. But these guys are the referees. They're not yes. the provider. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> Understood. Just, make, just making Thank sure. You. So, yes, at, at, at the Division of Workforce Solutions, we provide the ecosystem for the local workforce boards to operate within. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, and the only other question I have is uh, how many other counties in our region have taken you up on your offer? We've gotten uh, verbal commitments from three in the uh, in of the in the regional partnership. Five, yeah. Three of the five. Three of the five. Okay. So far. More Montgomery and Orange. Orange, yeah. And Randolph is in the same position that we're in. They're right. about to make a decision. Yes, sir. So. They may be making that decision tonight. I'm not sure. Yeah. That's it for me. They wanted to wait for us to make a decision, <laughs> then make theirs. Well, we, we, are, <laughs> well, we are the leaders, so they do want to yeah. follow up. <laughs> uh, any, board, any other questions? So what we can do is have uh, Jenny can uh, tomorrow send uh, send y'all a note just with the letter of intent that uh, you'd be able to complete and then you could just email that in to, and then we can get the ball rolling once your letter of intent is submitted. 
So, I, you know, whenever you choose to vote, obviously it's your decision. But uh, she could send you that note just so you've got it available. And we truly appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Thank you all so much for making time for us. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, sir. Board, my recommendation would be that we look at it, we look at the materials that will be sent to us. Um, and Ms. Harris, I think you're going to send maybe to all five, certainly to me, you were going to send additional information uh, from the state level, um, if I remember correctly, part of your presentation. Uh, uh, and if you could send that to all five board members, um, then my recommendation would be to look at the materials, do your study, and let's uh, take the vote on September the 5th. That will give us time to uh, go through all of the materials and make a wise decision. Um, and your presentation was excellent, uh, very, very informative. I wish all five board members had been able, uh, I don't know that we had that many seats in the room. <laughs> they were well, probably 45, 50 seats in the room, I would guess. Um, so with all five of us, we would have been standing around the corners, I suspect. But uh, well done. Thank you. My recommendation is that we put it off to September 5th. I don't think that needs a motion, 6th, does it? To our next meeting. All right. That's fine with me, Mr. Chairman. I had a quick question for the county manager, if I may. Yes, please. Do, do we know whether the chamber has weighed in on this and whether ACC has weighed in on this decision? Uh, only informally. Uh, we haven't asked them to take a stand. They've both been supportive of the efforts we've had and are both happy to move forward with either organization, I believe. I don't want to speak for Dr. Gatewood. He's here, but um, I'm happy to get a more formal response from them if you'd like. But I, I'd like to know where they, if they okay. stand one way or the other or the other. Okay. Dr. Gatewood, would you, would you like to address that or would you I, rather prefer I think waiting? The county manager, at least for now, has articulated it very well. Uh, we're in a, I think we're in a good position as a college and we're certainly going to support whatever decision you make. Thank you. Yes. Board, I would suggest to all five of us that we call Dr. Uh, Gatewood directly and ask if, if he has other input because we need to put this is an important decision we need to put it together after a lot of thought um, and so i would encourage us and i think mr carter and i have talked to dr gaywood um, i would encourage the other three to do so please are we good with putting this off to september 5th Paul? sure six six yes i'm hey i'm with y'all <laughs> Mr. Turner, Mr. Carter, okay. We'll have this back on our docket for September 6th. Sure. 5th. 5th. Mm -hmm. So one board one member is telling me the 6th and one is telling me the 5th. Well, the 5th is Labor Day. Yeah. Let's not use John's calendar, though, okay? <laughs> I, I, I actually hey, clarified this story before the meeting. Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a story. We're not going into that story. No, we won't go there. You can call the police. <laughs> Okay, guys, um, let's go to uh, ACC, Dr. Gatewood. Well, actually, I think uh, Susan's, yeah. Susan's going to introduce it. Any question you have? Yep. Yes, sir. And we thank you. Yes. Good evening, Commissioners. Good evening. Um, before you tonight is a, an amendment to our Community College Construction Bond Project. Um, ACC was awarded a special allocation from the state of $3.6 million and they are requesting that we be able to transfer $2,950,218 from our Center of Excellence project to the Public Safety Center to help with those increasing costs that they've had there. And as we spoke earlier, Dr. Gatewood is here in case you have any questions. So you're going to take the Community Service Center, <coughs> some from that to go to this other? Yes, ma'am. So they received their allocation of $3,651,550, and a portion of that was to cover equipment. We had built in $2.9 million of equipment into our bond proceeds. Mm -hmm. So what we're asking to do is to transfer those bond dollars over to the Public Safety Training Center, which will help with those increasing costs that they've experienced there. So is this just timing, or is it 
you're ta what are you cutting from the one you're taking out? So we're not cutting okay. anything. Okay. Nothing is being cut. We have a different funding source. Okay. Where the original equipment was going to come from our public sale of our bonds. Now that they have that state allocation, they're able to use the state allocation to purchase that equipment. And now we're able to, the request to the board tonight is to transfer those bond funds from one project, the Center of Excellence, over to the Public Training Safety Center. Okay. Well, I know you'd have to change some doorknobs and some floors, and I thought, right. what, what, you getting ready your doors next? No, yeah, you're just, just going to get a shower curtain. Yeah. Up, so. Okay, expensive. I just want to make sure. We're just for planning funds. Okay. So mm -hmm. the total amount is not going to change. Okay. The bond project. I didn't want you to cut anything else. No, we, we, we don't want to cut anything <laughs> okay. else. Right. Back to the conversation for another day, not to get ahead of Susan and the uh, county manager <laughs> and all, but we need more, not less. But this helps us get closer to where we need to be okay. with the training center. Okay. Uh, do we, what do we do? Since I serve on the uh, building and grounds committee for the for ACC, um, what this I think is going to help with is part of the cost. We were looking at two major components of the public safety training center that we weren't going to be able to complete. The uh, fire towers, which are designed to be used for both law enforcement to train in and as in a building of sorts, and for fire department, and our indoor firing range. Uh, this is enough money. We, we, we were looking at, because of cost increases, we were looking at have to, having to cut out the um, fire tower and the indoor firing range. This is enough to cover the fire towers, but not enough to cover the indoor firing range. Uh, Dr. Gatewood mentioned to me earlier, I think it was $5 million is what that projected to cost. $5 million for the firing range. Indoor, when, and we have several members of the committee agreed to try and approach um, the community and talk about some options for an outdoor range temporarily. But uh, you just have to see. But yeah, if I may. Um, sure. Or, Commissioner Carter. Carter. Yeah. What we knew he was going to get you up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never step oh, thank box. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. What, what we'd like to do is to um, really seek federal financing, potentially some state financing. If you recall, we, recall we've been relatively successful with fundraising. That's finding external resources that are not state funds per se, but that don't flow through the county, not county funds for sure. And we think that there's some other opportunities. Uh, Sheriff Johnson and I met with Green Level several years ago, and I must say that we made a commitment at that time that the firing range would be inside. So what we're going to do everything within our resources to figure out a way to get the firing range inside. Uh, otherwise, I, I think we would be Sheriff's word is pretty powerful. We want to keep it that way. My word has a little bit of powerful uh, power. We want to make it stronger. Uh, and, and so that's just where we are. We're in a precarious situation here with the escalation. I was talking to a colleague from another community college. I won't name that college. But they had an $8 million project. And now because of COVID escalation, that project has morphed into $24 million. That's do the math, that's 700%, 300% higher. And when I look at it from that angle, well, we're not doing so bad. <laughs> now, there is one small caveat, and we don't know how this is going to play out. But they're doing the borings right now for the, on the property where we'll build a public safety training center. Depending upon what they find under that earth, oh, yeah. this could change a little. Unfortunately, it could go up or it could go down. But once we learn what the status of that is, we'll, we'll come back and share that with you and, and then make decisions on how we move forward then. That's just where we are. I knew from 
some of the personal projects that I've been involved in over the years, if you find, if your boring show a lot of granite underneath, you're talking about big bucks. Yeah. So, we'll have to wait and so, see. We'll have to wait and see when, you know, as I say, I'm praying for the best. <laughs> we'll see how it plays out. Well, that's, sure. that's how, what, how we, where we are, but in this case, we're simply moving money from one pot to another. The total picture doesn't change, not by one penny. And Sheriff Johnson, I think you wanted to speak as well. Yes, sir. I tell you, when we met with Green Level, one of the biggest <coughs> problems they talked about was an indoor range. You know how many complaints we get on Red Industries range yeah. where well, you can quadruple them because law enforcement will be shooting many times 24-7 in training. Uh, and I think it's more imperative that if we can help or whatever, get that indoor range. If not, I know I won't be sleeping at night. My phone's gonna be ringing off the hook and y'all will be too. <laughs> and when we talked to Green Level, you know, that was one of the requests they had that we have an indoor range. And if there's any way we can make that happen for the community college in this, I feel like we, we need to make that happen. It's going to be economic growth coming to green level like you've never seen once this training center opens up. People are already talking about it from other uh, areas of community colleges and stuff. Uh, Orange County. So, so I wish, wish we could make it happen somehow. And if we don't, I think we're going to be sorry we didn't. We're very close. And we wouldn't be this close had we not done the external fundraising. So. We had a meeting. Uh, Sheriff Johnson was there. I was there. Um, there may have been others of us there with Green Level. And we talked about an indoor range. So. so we plan to meet yet again with Green Level to give them an update on the total project. And we'll be very candid with Green Level as to where we are. Please let us know when that's to happen. Be very happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, a couple, couple questions, if I may. Yeah, sure. Uh, Dr. Gatewood, uh, yes. just, just a couple questions. Where are we with the process for contracting for services for the public training center? You mean in terms of the design and the, the, the well, the design or the I mean, I, I just don't know where we are in the, in the whole yeah, process in yeah. terms of getting bids or have we accepted a bid? Do we have a, a process for determining what type of, of contract we're going right. to have? Yes. And Tom Hartman, our um, associate VP for administrative services under which this falls off. If you don't mind, I'll let okay. him answer the question. I can answer, but I think you probably want to hear from Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we're really at, the, really at the design phase right now. Schematic design just was completed. We do have the designer, of course, um, hired. That's Mosley Architects. Okay. And then the CM at risk is SAMIT. Okay. Uh, they're the CM at risk on the project. So really, um, once we get the geotech portion done, the soil conditions we just mentioned, um, then our next step would be construction drawing. So we're still a ways off from bidding. Uh, we're probably looking at the beginning of 2023 before the bid process can happen. So the, the cost information we're using now are all third-party estimator uh, costs as well as Sam had also uh, estimated the cost as well. Do you anticipate having a guaranteed maximum price or, or something else? Yeah, we will have that. We'll have a GMP once we get to that, that bid portion in, in that um, January, February time frame. Okay. All right. Okay. Are there other questions? I, I, have, I have a um, few, but I think mine are for Ms. Evans. Okay, all right. Um, Thank you. Thank you. I may actually have um, a way to save you $5 million. Yes, sir. Um, I'm just looking through the uh, second handout that you have on, on this particular item. And I'm looking at the Public Safety Training Center, Project 2450. It says total project budget was recently increased by $2 million. So the total project budget moved from $10.4 million to $12.4 million. My question is, what does recent, when, when was this recently increased? If you'll bear with me just one minute. I remember the situation while she's looking, because they was talking about premium. Right. And I was against premium 
and and the school ABSS had found money to kind of cut in their capital funds to cover some of the over the top stuff they were needing and ACC went back and found 2.5 million in your capital group right capital funds mm -hmm. right? Yep. Okay. That's, right. Yep. that's all I got okay. that's all good it's all good because <laughs> I have it right here yep. Perfect. Bear with me just one moment. Let me get that. I was just curious, like when this was updated, like um, when it was recent. What, what was the date? It was recently increased? Okay, Back in June, wasn't it? Uh, I, th I think that's true, but I want to hear it from her. Check February. It was cold. I was thinking it was um, during the February meeting. Let me see. And then that four. I didn't realize it was that far back. It was cold. Yeah, I, I, I just couldn't remember. That's <laughs> yes. why I'm asking. So that was done on February 21st, okay, 2022. Okay. Uh, just to throw this out here, just, just, just an idea. I mean, you talk about $5 million, that's a lot of money. Uh, I have, and Commissioner Thompson was with me that day when which we talked to an owner of an indoor firing range who said, and he made, correct me if I'm wrong, he is willing to give us an incredible deal that will let our sheriff's deputies come and train in his facility and, and, and let them come back whenever they want. It, it, they can come back 30 times a month or twice a day for uh, 30 days for $12 a month. Do you know how many months we could pay with $5 million? I'm just throwing it out there. It's just an idea. It's not like that this shooting range, if it's going to create consternation with a community, we might want to think about this. I mean, if, if, the, if, the, if the ground is, doesn't work or if it's going to cost a lot of money to put this in, we really should think, like someone said tonight, let's think outside the box. Let's try to save $5 million. And if it gets our folks trained with, with, with what they need to do, we should think about it. Just an idea. I know we're not here to talk about it right now, but it's just an idea. But thank you for your your answer. I appreciate it. Because I could not remember. I knew we had talked about it, but I just couldn't remember. Not a problem. And my notes were horrible. There is no way that I'm going to support an outdoor range for the fact that we've had other Mr. Cardessi, mm -hmm. Brad, and to see how the public is not happy with that. I mean, I think that would be settling, and also I think that would be imposing that on the neighborhood. I mean, it's, it's like, do it right. You know what I mean? But, because um, that's... Um, I, that's going to be a, a cluster before it's even done because you give your word and, and you can't help how things turn out with all this craziness when it comes to buildings and changing and all that. The schools had to really get it stuck with steel prices and I'm sure ACC has too. But um, I know how it really causes dissension in a neighborhood. I've seen it with RAD and, that, and I don't want that for anybody. Um, and we don't want to have another location that's going to be the same thing again. So. We just had to find a way to do this. Before you sit down, my question to Mr. Lashley would be, uh, one, the geographic difference between the uh, shooting facility indoor, I suspect I know who it is, but I don't know that. It's family uh, traditions. Okay, I know exactly where that is. Uh, one, you've got a problem with they're all the way across the county. Uh, the yeah. proximity to this new center would be uh, a major issue um, and I know I've been in there and in the firing range so forth. they have limited spaces uh, that would be a second issue third thirdly they have uh, a lot of customers uh, that would be in competition with law enforcement and the timing in the facility so that would be I'm not saying that's not a good idea at all I'm just simply saying we need to consider all the aspects. Well, I know he reassured us about reservations and timing and all that. Because that, it was a really interesting conversation as far as what that could be. I mean, it's something to really think about because I think the more we can put back into small businesses mm -hmm. revenue for them, that's even better because he's not the only one. Oh, he's not the only. Yeah. Uh, he's and not I, the only indoor firing range that's made this. Right. Proposal. And it's just the only one that I felt comfortable. Because right, that's where I got my care. That's where I got right. my stuff from, and that's where I went. And um, and then I got Bill to go to talk with him, and we just sit there, and he was just as straight as it gets. But um, if you drive to somewhere to take classes, 
you can drive somewhere else to shoot. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it's, it's all kind of ifs, ands, and buts that we can put into it, but I just think we need to really look at every angle to get what we want, to have it as professional as it's supposed to be, but to benefit other places in the county as well. And be cost effective for yeah. the taxpayer. I mean, $5 million is a lot of money. We just raised salaries in this county $5 million. That's a lot of money. <clears throat> Let me ask the sheriff a question about space. You. You're, I know you're familiar with the space we're discussing. Um, I'm, I'm sure from a perspective of just qualification, and I'm, I don't know anything about the training process, or at least not enough to be in, make decisions about it, but training involves both training just qualification sort of thing where you're just standing and firing plus you've got the tactical training thing I'm thinking of where you're trying to maneuver in space and so you've got to have a larger space I believe than what's available over there for the tactical part we have we have all our officers have to qualify at least once a year and our tactical officers are always on the same practicing 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 and prime example Go to Castle County where a deputy was shot three times. Wednesday morning. Our tactical team showed up, handled that very well. Nobody died. And that's very important, I think. And not only is it going to be for the Alamance County Sheriff's Office, Bourbon PD, Elon PD, Gibsonville right. PD, Mevin PD, Graham PD, and the surrounding counties are going to be wanting to come in too. That's right. But we will have first choice when it comes to that range if it's our range. I can tell you that. Sure, we appreciate your comments. Uh, let's bring us back into focus. That's not why we're here right now. That's not. Uh, so I would make a motion that we approve the um, money changes as proposed by Ms. Evans. Uh, Second. Mr. Chair, before you take a vote on that, you might want to consider allowing Commissioner Carter to recuse himself from the vote based on his involvement with the college. True. Thank you. And you go over there and stand on that wall. <laughs> In the corner. No, I'm going to stand, stand on your wall over there. Wall. <laughs> can we allow him to say where he is and this no. not no, no, no. <laughs> To the extent the microphones are on and you're going to take a verbal vote, I would say that probably leaving the stage would be a good idea. Thank you. All right. So I'm requesting that I'll be recused from this vote. In the corner. Okay, we have a request. Repeat that, please. I'm requesting that I be recused from this vote since I'm serving on the ACC Board of Trustees. I'll second that. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Pam, I'm coming down to your corner. <laughs> <laughs> She's the one that... recognition <laughs> of the tradition that you created. That's right. That's it. Only the special. I'll call it Amen Corner. <laughs> there you go. I like that, Rick. I like that. I like you, Rick. I like you. Okay, bring us back into focus. I made the motion. Who made the second? I'll second it. All right. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Carter, you can come I'll back and join. Yep. Mm. Mr. Stevens, thank you. You're welcome. May I request of our county manager uh, that as to the other part of this discussion that was not really part of the discussion, mm -hmm. uh, that we get further input and recommendations from uh, the sheriff's office, certainly, uh, ACC, and the other individuals, um, and maybe even contact some of the um, uh, indoor ranges and just and then present that back to us uh, as soon as possible. That's a great idea, John. You may want to just get like a team to go on site to see these places. Yes. Manager, well, you know, you know there's another know angle to this thing, too, that I, I don't think we've even considered. Uh, uh, we have kind of, sort of, we have private ranges that are interested in trying to offer the service. Uh, what if we had a private range that was willing to build a facility 
invest the capital to build a facility such as this for the benefit of the school and operate it themselves. That's certainly a different idea. Different approach, but we got they would have to look at the opportunity and the uh, resources of uh, the source of revenues that could be produced. Same thing that the college is doing. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, Miss Manager. I'm clear. That's that's your deal. <laughs> Thank you. I'll bring back further information. Okay, you're up next again. I'm up next again. So before you also, commissioners, I am bringing a request for us to do our annual designation. Um, we are in the process of closing out our fiscal year 21-22 um, financial books for the auditors to come in. And one of the last things that we like to do beforehand is to designate any monies that we need to use for future purposes. Um, so for tonight, I bring before you a request to designate $2,681,017.02 from our general fund and also to designate $43,523.90 for our landfill fund. Um, for the landfill fund, that will continue the work of their new sale and with their permit and prerequisite work that is already in progress. And for our general fund, this will set aside $1.2 million for DSS with their child welfare with the Cardinal VIA program. Um, just to remind the board, we entered into an MOA with VIA Cardinal at the time, and it is to provide monies for Medicaid gaps when we have individuals and children who are coming into foster care. $400,000 would be set aside for future legal settlements. One hundred seventeen thousand five hundred dollars for ongoing um, CIP projects for maintenance, fifty thousand dollars set aside for ongoing CIP projects for our recreations department, and ten thousand dollars, which was budgeted in fiscal year 21-22, for the clerk of court for a new jury system. Um, and if you'll recall, we did budget ten thousand dollars in fiscal year 22-23. This will go ahead and start setting those funds aside each year so that over the course of years they'll have the, the monies that they need to purchase their system. <clears throat> Motion to approve. I'll oh, second. Oh, Ms. Thompson. I used to just get out of the old and motion to second. Any other questions? Any other comments? In the past, did we not wait until the audit was complete? Or is, that a, or is that a separate, that's a separate uh, line item? Is it? Is it not? So what we're doing right now, this is done before the audit comes in and takes place. So for fiscal year 21-22, um, it's within the board's authority for us to set aside money that is in the fiscal year 21-22 budget, um, to go ahead and set those monies aside so that they are designated so that when we do have our closeout, they will be in that um, restricted and assigned fund balance versus unassigned fund mm -hmm. balance. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. I just have one question. Yeah. Yes, sir. I promise it won't be long. <laughs> Since we're talking about, and you used the word, I didn't use the word audit. Yes. I know last year's audit was a um, troublesome because of all that stuff that went on with the COVID. Yep. I just want to ask you, does it look as if the audit this year is going to be a little more cleaner? Much cleaner. Okay, um, the U.S. Treasury has already come out with their compliance supplement for ARC dollars. So that was our holdup for last year's audit, was having to wait on Treasury to get a, a compliance supplement out for our auditors to follow yeah. for units of government who had used ARC monies. Um, since it's already out, we should not see the delays that we had last year. Awesome. And that audit usually occurs October? We will be, they will August? actually be here the end of August Sweet. and they will have through the end of October, 1st of November to get all of our figures together and give us a report back. Excellent. Thank you. We will definitely see it sooner than we did this previous year in receiving it in April. Yeah, last year I remember it being really <laughs> tight. They are like, oh no, I'm not going to be able to see my audit before it's time to put on yeah, the budget. You will see it before then this time. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That's good news. What very good news. What did you anticipate? Um, at this time, I don't have a date to anticipate. Um, I do know that we would have, by LGC standards, 
have to have an audit in hand by November 30th or we would have to have an amendment to our contract and if that it runs into the case then we would bring that to the board sometimes that happens in previous years when the state is doing their confirmations for the Medicaid dollars that flow through DSS and health department and if there is a delay at the state level it has held county and municipal audits up in the past and we have had to amend for that I don't foresee that happening this year but something can always happen mm -hmm. <laughs> but we should definitely see it much sooner than April it'll make Mr. Lashley very happy and <laughs> it will make your finance officer very happy as well <laughs> excellent thank you Ms. Evans all right thank you any other comments about that stuff, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Bill's thing. Motion to approve. We, we've, already, we've already moved. Got it. Yeah. All right. Thank you. No, no, we will. We need to vote, though. Yeah, we yes. do. Yeah. We do still need a vote. We have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm not sure who's next on my agenda. I've got a county manager. I think it's me. County, county manager. Excellent. You ready for that? You're, you're up. <laughs> In your packet is your uh, quarterly management report that was referenced during some of the um, public comments this evening. We are aware that turnover has been trending high for some of our departments, but with the appointment of the DSS director and myself coming on board, we're hoping to strategize um, to address some of the turnover issues for the organization. Uh, this will be your last report to close out then fiscal year 22. I also wanted to just follow up and let you know that staff is planning to um, bring the Diversion Center funding proposal before the board at your September 6th meeting, along with a discussion about ARP funds and some potential uh, plans and recommendations for the board's consideration. So we're planning that for your next meeting. That's we won't have to vote on that, will we? After you do we not have to vote on. We're just going to give us some information. For the ARP okay. piece? Yes. yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Nothing else, sir. Thank All you. Right. Quick, Mr. Collins, quick, quick question if I could follow up on that, Mr. Yes. Chairman. Do we have a sense of, we're talking about, um, funding at the end of last fiscal year yes. uh, about the increase to ABSS's capital reserves over budgeted debt service. I know it's not audited, but do we have a, a sense of what kind of increase that looks like? We can certainly run a report and bring that back okay. to the board, if that would be helpful. I think that would be helpful as we come up on TRC and Operation okay. uh, okay. Oversight Committee this month okay. to know where we are going into this school year. Okay. I'll work with you, Andrea, on that. Okay. Any other questions or comments from county commissioners on with our county manager? All right. Let's go on to county commissioner comments. Mr. Turner, well, just, 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 a, just a piggyback on. report. Sorry? You got a county attorney's report. We have that after the commissioner comments. That's the county, county commissioner's comments are next. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just, well, looking you, at the thank, agenda, guys. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just to piggyback on that comment, I, I think you know, last year we, we looked at um, the increases to capital reserves at ABSS uh, and had a plan mid-budget cycle to, to, to use cash to fund some of those improvements that were on the top ten list. I think it's really important that we continue to look at that and we continue to move that forward, particularly in light of what ACC has presented to us and on these construction costs are not going down. They're not going to go down. Uh, we're going to have cash, I believe, two, two point five, maybe three million dollars above what we're what we're anticipating. That's that's what I believe. I don't, I haven't okay. seen that. It's not audited, uh, but that could do some work towards that top fourteen list. Uh, and I think we all, as you know, as things go through operational review, as things go through TRC, asking ABSS to provide, you know, what are those top priority capital plan or capital needs that they have, so we can begin to fund that and get that going as quickly as possible, I think is what we've got to look at. Okay. Good. Any other questions or comments to the county manager? Uh, no, I've got a question for Mr. Uh, Turner. You said two and a half to three million. What are you, what are you talking about? 
You said you. The, funding the ca the ABSS capital reserve plan gotcha. over a over debt service. Over debt service. I didn't catch that. Yeah, That's why over I'm debt service. Clarify. Thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate that. Any other comments? Like comments? No, oh, to the county manager. <laughs> on, before we move on to county I'm commissioners, I'm going to do the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to move on to county commissioners' comments at this point. Mr. Turner, I'm going to start on your end. Uh, I'm I'm good, thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, Mr. Carter. Yes, I had uh, the benefit of joining um, our 4-H representative at the breakfast and in, uh, in Concord this last week. And she gave us a very nice note. She and uh, Sarah Madry, Sarah is our 4-H representative for the county. The young woman has all the county schools, charter schools, and the private schools for 4-H work. It's an amazing mm -hmm. amount of work. And uh, uh, really impressed with both of them. Lexi gave us a nice little note thanking us for um, having her attend, attend the conference with us. So as county commissioners, thank you for allowing me to come to a meeting. Thank you for also supporting 4-H and all that we do. We appreciate all that you do for Alamance County. Lexi Hester, Alamance County 4-H. Excellent. That's nice. And just comment on that comment. Uh, <laughs> she was present in Concord uh, along with the 4-H representative. Uh, took the time to go to the, uh, the breakfast uh, Saturday morning, I suppose. Uh, and personally thanked in each, each and every one of us that were in attendance. Um, she also made the appearance about a month or so ago, a couple of months and whatever. She was the lady that uh, raised and was showing turkeys, but indicated she would not eat them. <laughs> <laughs> not hers. <laughs> okay. She does eat turkey, but not hers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Corner. Mr. Lashley. I have nothing. Thank you, Chairman. Ms. Thompson. Um, I just have a few things. I think it's always so important when um, your leaders go out of town on a conference, they need to bring back what they've learned and what they saw It's because it's not like ours to keep. But I did, I got the most wonderful letter from Beacon Baptist Church over the weekend while I was gone, and it's about um, them saying that they're praying for me. And I know they pick county leaders to do this. This is really all I need. So I just want to thank them. That That is right up there with just everything for me. Um, I was in, we were in so many classes and we didn't, we tried not to do the same ones so we could really learn a lot of different things and you can imagine the ones I went into. I just want to talk about, I was in one with a, a county that's real close to Charlotte and it was about the senior aging committee because I'm on that for the county and it's called a silver tsunami. That's what we're talking. And um, because that's going to be a huge population in this county and we've got to really be ready for it. This particular county has four senior centers like Cronodal and with them they have outdoor parks like that roll that ball thing and all kind of stuff. These people are competitive. I mean they, they'll go after you, you know, what is it, corn oil, all that stuff. And it's just so good for act, being active, having a purpose, you know, I, I think it's so, we really miss out on so much with our seniors because they have been there and done that and paved the way for everything and we need to always honor that and make sure they've got things to keep them active and looking forward to the next day. Um, I was also in um, a the veteran service office meeting. Um, Y'all went, there was one, it was a documentary and I said no I'm going to go in this. There, there were so many good things it was hard to choose but they had Harnett County, Cumberland, Buncombe and Forsyth all have a veterans court. And it's very much like the recovery court that I've been trying to push to go along with diversion because it's all part of the same group, as so to speak. But um, I have plans to go to Harnett County and meet with them. I asked if I could come down and talk to them about how they do this. They've got a YouTube video out interviewing all these judges that are leading this in their counties and how they just working with these veterans that are coming back from deployment with PTSD. They get involved with drinking and drugs and or injuries. They've been on opiates for a long time from hospital visits and things. And it is just so important to watch the lives of these um, men and women change because then they're productive citizens and they add to everything in the county. And I can't say how enough how important that is. There's also something that's going to be coming for this Veterans Day. This November is for the week. I hope Tammy will present this. I'm just going to just hit on it. It's called Operation Green light. 
This is out of New York for their veteran service office, and they're sending this out to the whole country. But we've already got ours. We will, you see how we light the courthouse up sometimes with different colors. Well, for our public government buildings and anybody else that wants to, it'll be green. So um, it's going to really be cool that whole week, and it'll be our Veterans Parade and everything like that. But it's a really, really important thing because they were talking about the money that comes in to counties um, tax-free. My son gets so much from his disabilities, and that's tax-free. You can't touch it. And that money in turn is turned around and spent back in this county. There's like $5.8 billion for the VA that is going out for different types of um, retirements and disabilities and stuff like that. And with the Camp Lejeune water issue, that lawsuits you're seeing, there's going to be a lot of that here with cancers coming out of that. And also the PACT Act, thank you, was passed in Congress because New York, the whole country got really ticked. And so they passed it. That's 23 different types of cancers out of this burn pits in Iraq. And, and we're seeing the results of that. So that's going to be so thankful we have that additional officer over at the VSO because they're going to be swamped. They were talking about this, you know, nationwide. So um, it's very important we look at the money that can come back in here to our county through veterans whenever they are retired. And the highest rate of ages, that, that most popular age of retired veterans is 70 to 74 years old. And that's, that's part of our senior age. So it's all tying in together. Um, also, with I was in the opioids thing. We heard our guest speaker. Um, this woman was amazing. She's wrote um, a book called Raising Lazarus. And she's just the rock solid pro when it comes to addiction and mat, you know, medicines and medicines that help with transforming someone who's addicted into recovery because it is just not easy. I'm taking another one of our clients Wednesday down near Pikesville. Just really pray for this young woman. But anyway, um, we was just talking about different things like that. And Surrey County, um, I sat in on their class, and they are kind of right with us. And I think it's very important that we sit down at the table with other places that are doing things like we are that are ahead of us because we can really pick their brains to figure out how they did it so we don't have to go through so much fire to get there. So um, I talked with their um, peer support specialist, just like we have Krista um, Knight that's amazing here. Their stories are so similar. But just the, the passion that they have for this population is unbelievable, and they're not fooled either. Their, their leaders are just all that. So I would spoke to the sheriff. If um, he would like to go, I encourage you all to go. We'll ride in separate cars and we'll make Thomas go with us. But um, we, um, I really want to take a team of who we are compared to what they are to really sit and round table with them because we have got to get busy on diversion and treating opioid crisis. we we got to get busy and get on it and take that step. And so, um, but they were talking about just different things as far as um, how that could be a collaboration with, it's, it's all connected together and it really is. And also, I sat in with um, a lady, really sharp lady. She's over the public defender's office for the state. And um, she was talking about the need for this and she was giving me counties that hardly have any attorneys because of their, just their levels. Because my husband's got a contract that does the indigent list. Uh, most people in high crimes and drug abuse and all this other stuff, you know, they don't come in and write you a check for $25,000 to retain them. They are really homeless. They are really struggling. And that's just where it is. And they deserve representation. That's just the way it is for our justice system. And so they were talking about different counties like Alexander, Washington, Edcombe, Northampton, Hertford, Camden, all these places were really struggling with getting attorneys to represent the indigent list. And there's a handful here in the county, but personally speaking, it is overwhelming how many cases you get. And so looking at public defender's office would be exactly like the DA's office, just on the other side. And that would really work and really work strongly in this county to move these cases and people not sitting in jail for so long because their attorney has so many cases piled on top of them. Um, and the other thing about, I wanted to say this, is the teachers, I got this book, it's like, it's <laughs> Mecca. This is everything you need to know. But I, I text Dane Butler and I text Sandy and Patsy. I went, oh my gosh, the teacher salary supplements. We were in the top 10. I left the board 2020 and I, boy, we were smoking hot. We were so proud to be in that top 10. That has a major effect when teachers are shopping to come work in the county. I promise you, because their salary is one thing, but this is the other. And we were number 10. 
and now we are number 13. And we're number 13 because um, I was sitting with the county manager from Buncombe County and she was sitting there showing me all this stuff. And New Hanover County doubled theirs, which bumped us down. And Guilford, we were over them and now they're nine. So you know they're going, huh? So I just want to share that with the commissioners to just stress how important and enticing that supplement is for teachers because it makes a tremendous difference. I've heard several um, about how the bonuses have really made a difference in hiring and coming here, but that bonus is a one-time thing and it's gone. That's just it. I don't want another COVID to get another bonus. It's the same thing with DSS when we give bonuses with that. That's a one-time thing and it's done. So we really need to think about our salaries and how strong they are to keep everybody here so that we continue to grow and build a strong foundation for our county, especially our children with consistency in our teaching. So in the last day, I thought, boy, Craig Turner, you should have so been here. Um, we got to listen to Rear Admiral Cressy, and he's about 80 years old, and I, I mean, he could, he could flip me in a second. He was so just uh, like this. He was awesome. But he was on the rescue mission for Hanoi when they were evacuating folks, you know, for that war. And he was telling Craig, and he already knew it anyway, that whenever they would pull people out of the embassy and they land on the ship, <coughs> if a helicopter hadn't gotten out of the way, they'd just push it in the water. They were moving. They were moving. And, and we've seen um, a year ago about trying to evacuate and how that was a total mess. So um, any time like that, it just can be a mess or it can be a victory. So, um, but he talked about, we learned about George Washington from 14 years old till later and how he was such a leader. He wasn't a ruler and he was so humble and so kind and come Christmas time or anything like that where the, the big shots would go home to spend time with their family, he never left his men. He ate what they ate, he slept where they slept and he led with them constantly. And that's a real leader and, um, and he, <coughs> he didn't have it, he had Hamilton and um, what was the guy's name? Thomas Jefferson, mm -hmm. and they, they kind of had ego problems, you know, same old, same old. And, um, and he really managed to get them to work together and compromise. Abraham Lincoln had a, had a mm, he had some stuff, drama. But anyway, it's funny how no matter how long ago it is, all the way back to Cain and Abel, we always mad about something. And if we don't work together, bad things happen and there are outcomes and people suffer from it. So um, this, this real admiral was just, um, I mean, it was just absolutely amazing. Y'all know him about soldiers, military, all this, but he was, um, he was funny, but he lives in D.C. and he was talking about how important it is for the county government, how we really make things happen, how important and great we handled the COVID crisis, not way up the street, so to speak, and people nowadays look to their county for what's going on and what's happening. And I think that's so important. That really holds us to a high standard and high accountability for us to always make sure we put the public first in everything we do and that we work together as one. So um, there were just, just so many really cool things that I learned. I was just so excited and so pumped up. And like I said, um, I met this gentleman from Duplin. And I said, oh, that's the place that got the little grapes on the sign when you're going to the beach. And he said, yeah. And I was telling him something about the lady. And I said, yeah, I sit in the same seat every Sunday. And he was a pastor. And he said, so you're one of those. And I said, no, no, no. And he was really funny. And he said, why do you sit in the same seat? I said, I sit in the front because I have to take a bullet from my pastor because I would in a heartbeat. So he was just a class act. I met so many people like that. And it's so nice to be around others that you're like-minded or you're not because you can really grow from them. And that's why going to Surrey County and going to Harnett County and going to other places that may be a step ahead of us, but we are amazing and we've got amazing people to make it happen. So diversion, you know, we are doing unbelievable work in that jail. People are, they are getting folks to different places all the time. And it is, it's, but it's, it's never ending. It's never ending. Like I said, we've had eight people to die since January, 2021. Those are our clients. There were 22 overdoses in July, and every time I turn around, there's another death. It is killing us. It is killing us as dead as I've ever seen, and it's not getting better. It is everywhere in every age. So, commissioners, we got to move. We got to. We can't keep waiting. We got to move. We got to do the right thing, no matter what. But we have got to move and be leaders in the state for this because um, Mecklenburg was telling me about theirs. There's other ones, Buncombe, and we need to be right up there with them so others can come here 
to sit with us at the table and learn from us because I know we've got what it takes to be that group. So um, that's it. Sorry to rattle, but I just was around just, yeah, it was like a hero festival to me. But that Rear Admiral, Navy, he's not Army, but he's Navy. <laughs> he made that clear. Didn't yeah. <laughs> I thought, I wonder if Craig, if he knows Craig, landed on the ship. <laughs> but not during Vietnam War, you weren't even thought of. So. Am I next? <laughs> I'm done. I'm sorry. Okay. I was just no, so yeah. excited. I met so many wonderful people. It was just such a blessing. Thank you so much. The information and data that we received in this uh, three-day, four-day commission, or uh, convention, uh, educational conference. Sub conference, whatever you want to call it, was amazing, and I agree with Ms. Thompson. Uh, I did find out that we have the 14th, uh, we have 14 in veterans, so there are 86 other counties with more veterans than we have. We're number 14 in line. I was surprised. I thought we had more than that. Um, I also found out that we were a tenth with the supplement, as Ms. Thompson just pointed out. So there are 90 other counties that don't do as well as we do. The handicap that we have is that we have Guilford and Orange and uh, all the, they gave us a map and it's got a cluster on it and the center of that cluster is black. Black represented the highest supplements. We are a green, which was the next level at 10. In other words, we've got all these counties right around us that are competing with us that are, uh, you know, basically paying more than we are, but we're the tenth best in the entire state. We were. We're thirteen so, now. Uh, That's according to this book. <laughs> right. So uh, just an incredible amount of information that we as commissioners received um, over the. Miss Thompson also talked about um, the drug court. Mm -hmm. I am highly in favor of that. It can do wonders, but guess what? We don't have the facilities to handle it at this point. We're gonna hopefully receive within the next two years another district court judge, which would be a large component to the drug court. We don't have anywhere to put that judge. Uh, so we as a county and we commissioners are gonna to have to look forward to expanding our court house facilities. Um, and Mr. Turner and I both have been attorneys for a long time, and I'm sure you've been, uh, you're as old as I am, right? <laughs> well, maybe not. Uh, but, you know, people think of court, they think of the traffic ticket, they think of the murder trial, they think of, that's only a small portion of the court system. Uh, the court system consists of criminal court, just talked about, civil court, administrative court, everything from guardianships to incompetencies, uh, estates, all kinds of things. The court system houses pretty much all of our needs and particularly our legal needs. Um, and without that, we can't function as a county. So we've got to look forward and we as commissioners have got to plan for the future. And that would include expanding so we can have the drug court, for example. The diversion center that Ms. Thompson alluded to also incredibly important. Sheriff Johnson, you've addressed that on a number of occasions. Uh, the folks at Cone Hospital and the different <coughs> hospitals have urged us to get on with the uh, expansion of the diversion center. So those are just things that um, can't do anything about tonight, but just keep on your list somewhere very, very high. Thank you. County Attorney. Nothing business-wise for me tonight. I just want to say thank you to all the county staff that I've encountered over the last couple of weeks. They've been excellent to work with, and they're a credit to, to you all, and that's all for me tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And just a thought. Um, since we've got, like, Judge Brown and Judge Hanford and Judge um, Lambeth, and I, and I can't speak for Rick Champion, but I, I know his character. He'd probably be all over it. You know, um, when you got judges supporting it and um, other people in the the people that's about it supporting it, um, probably one day a month or one morning a month, right here because we held court over the racetrack here. So um, I just um, 
I'm just always optimistic and positive because I know every day that we don't do stuff like that, we lose people. It's like DSS. When they're, when I first got on their board, there were 62 people needing positions. And now I think we're in the middle to low 30s, low to middle 30s, which is, wow. You know, that's still a lot. And uh, we, the last meeting I had was talking about um, competency and guardianship for folks that have to have adult supervision. They just can't manage their life on their own. And the caseload on that is, you know, is extremely heavy. And um, it's just the numbers. It's kind of like a school nurse has eight, around 800 kids. I mean, you were right. I would not want those stats looking at me if I went in the emergency room. Uh, it might be three weeks where they get to me. So it's just something to really think about. Until we kind of walk in those shoes, we don't really know. And I would like to encourage my fellow commissioners um, um, to do a ride along with some of our officers, Matt and maybe Jake and some of them, when they have to go on a call when there's been an overdose or when there's been a mental health crisis. I encourage you to do that kind of ride along because, um, like I said, I about had somebody to die in my car two weeks ago from an overdose. And it, you don't get over it. You really don't. And it makes you fight that much harder for that population that are just so owned by drugs. It, they own you. And so I just encourage, you know, I rode along on the, the Sheriff's Academy thing, and, and I thought, I'm going to roll up in here. I'm going to arrest somebody. I stay in the car and say nothing. But um, I'm just saying, we all need to walk in other's shoes, because if we do, we fight for stuff harder. And um, I'm, I'm just saying, I know you, you can't fix it all overnight, but we can't act like we can't. We just got to keep working. And I know we do. So thank you, John. Thank you. Do we have a motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor say aye and aye. leave. Aye. <laughs> aye. <laughs>for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.localgov.tv TVNC.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the County Commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.